Thank you for this time together, Father God. We ask that you guide us in your word, Lord, and teach us what you want us to learn, Father God. And we ask that you thank you for all you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, and thank you. They went into Capernaum and uh, straightway unto, on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for they, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone, what have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And over here in a little thing, it says, be muzzled, which is nice. And verse 26, and when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. You know, I don't know if you want to start and then I'll finish. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. You do it. So I, um, when I read this, the first thing, um, I'm going off the first question, what uh, was, uh, illuminated to you to you yes the the first thing i thought of was um he picked up uh what was it james john andrew and simon i believe mm -hmm. or, and his next thing is after picking up this word is going straight into synagogue and teaching that was his job to do so i thought that was kind of cool he only had four disciples he was already teaching but what i found really cool was that in verse 22 that they were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one with authority not as a scribe yeah they recognized his authority they recognized his wisdom and then uh it was different than a regular scribe so my thing is not that they had the holy spirit but they already recognized the authority he had in the Lord just one time he they've not seen him before right so I thought that was kind of interesting that they even thought he was greater than a scribe yeah you know and then um down by uh verse 24 uh, uh he just started his journey he just started at the beginning of his three years and already demons were afraid of him. I and when I, thought, I mean, he just started. He picked up four disciples and it's his first time preaching in synagogue. Mm -hmm. And they already, I, what I thought was really cool is they're afraid of him and they acknowledged who he was. And it got me because I'm thinking, wait, they called him the Holy One of God. So they already recognized who he was. And I, and I, thought that was kind of interesting and made me think that even the devil, if the demons are acknowledging who he is, the devil's acknowledging who he is. Right. So I thought, you know, I thought that was interesting. And then, uh, and also the authority that the Lord had, he was telling them to hold your peace and come out of him. I mean, because he didn't want nothing being said. It wasn't time yet. But, I mean, he just told the demons, shut up. <laughs> And, I know, uh, and I like that too. <laughs> just be quiet and get out of them. So the uh, last question was, uh, how can you apply insight to our lives? We have the same authority as Jesus has, and we should walk in that knowledge and wisdom that we have the same authority to tell demons and the devil to shut up and hold your peace. I know it, see? So that's what I got out of it because I'm thinking, I'm like, he just told me pretty much just zip it. I don't want to hear you. Right. And get out. There was no that's conversation. It. There was no, well, no. let me talk to you. There was just boom, 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 go. And he, the devil had, the demon had no choice. Okay, I'm out of here. Bye. You know what yeah. I mean? Just, and we have that authority through the Holy Spirit. It's like, it's a spiritual knowledge, but uh, you got to get it. Yeah. In here too, you yeah. know. Yep, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. But that's what I got.
they were astonished, which is a strong, at his doctrine. The thing is, as one who had authority, now what I thought was, is they may have known about the God of Israel, about right. the God of their ancestors and the history, you know what I mean? And the right. laws, because see, they end up doing all the laws. But Jesus spoke with confidence and authority as not only knowing about the Lord, he knows the Lord. He knew God personally. Right. Right. You know what I mean? So, so he spoke with confidence right? because he knew about God and, and, and the character, I believe, in the attribute. Well, plus he was God, but he was 100% man too. And right. he had to still walk by faith like we are because he was in, tempted in all manner and likeness like we are. Right. So he, he was God in the flesh, yes, but he still had to learn of the Lord. I think that's why he spent so much time in prayer. And that's what we're supposed to do too. You know what I mean? You know, right. even if it's just 15 minutes a day, you know, just 15 right. minutes a day, solitude with God, just me and you, Lord, you, you know, yep. what's on your heart type thing, you know? But I think that was that was the difference. He wasn't peddling religion. Right, right. He was right, right, because he had a relationship. Yeah, he he. The yeah, he, and Pharisees didn't have that bond. Or no, they just had law wisdom. Not, they just had law. They just right. had a law. Not mercy, law. love, compassion. Yeah, but, right. Aside from the spirit of God. You know what I mean? So, I mean, we could peddle religion, but right. religion doesn't change or prick the heart of men. Religion won't do right. that. The Holy Spirit will, you know? And then um, I like verse 25 where, you know, like you said too, because that's what comes out, you know, um, you know, that Jesus just said, hold thy peace and come out of them, you know, like beat it. And, and they did know him, but he didn't waste any time conversating or reasoning with no. the enemy. No, right. He just, you know, he just said, yeah. I rebuke you and come out of him. Jesus was and is the living word of God. You know what I mean? So he, the word, the word of God spoke. You see, and, and the word of God spoke, you know what I mean? So he was literally and physically the living word of God manifested, right? So then when we speak, and like I said last week when I was in prayer or two weeks ago, but the Lord, I, I said, in the name of Jesus. And then I, I saw like the letters then by, B-Y, by the name of Jesus. And I'm like, amen. And then for the name of Jesus. It's it's for God. Just powerful. There there's something in that name. You know, I know we sing the song, but I mean there's just something where that's that's the Lord's seal of approval. That that's the power of attorney. You know what I mean? Is Jesus, you know, and um and that's how we've been sent, you know, with that power of attorney to speak and represent him here on earth, you know? How would I have handled the situation? Would I have talked to him? Yeah, I think I would have probably said Shanda Bahandai, but they don't speak tongues, so they wouldn't have comprended. So, um, <laughs> we'll confuse the enemy, he can't speak tongues. But, um, you, you know, I, probably like you're saying, in the name of Jesus, you, you know what I mean? You you come out of them in the name of Jesus and just go like that. Um, and again, uh, how would we align our hearts with what Mark brought to light was the his doctrine is something that kind of, um, what was the doctrine of Jesus? I'm interesting because remember, Mark was the observer and he's observing firsthand accounts the Holy Ghost bringing it all back to their remembrance to Peter, apparently, remember? And right. then he's turning around and he's scribing. Now Mark is scribing. He's writing everything down 
first account from what Peter was telling them. So right. these was points where it was their doctrine and it was his teaching. And he taught as one who had authority, not as the scribes. So, you know, so, so we'll just work on that. What was the doctrine of Jesus? You know, and we could probably always start with um, look up the word doctrine and it might say teaching, it might say this and that, you know what I mean? Just for, just for jeepers, you know, and, um, and that, that'll be the homework for next week. Okay. Well, we thank you, Father God, and we come before you, Lord, and we thank you that, you know, your word says we're two or more are gathered, that you're here in our midst. Father God, I thank you that you've sanctified us. I thank you, Holy Spirit, you're bringing the word sanctification, sanctification. And, and Lord, you know, there was a time where the Jews and the Hebrews, the scribes, Pharisees, that they used to sanctify themselves in these baths, these, these ritualistic baths. But Father God, we thank you that by your blood and faith, we're sanctified, even through your word that cleanses us by the power of your Holy Spirit. So Father God, we thank you. We come before you. We ask you to forgive all of our sins, our folly and our shortcomings, Father God, our weaknesses, Lord. And we give you all the glory and we thank you for your love and kindness and your mercy. We thank you for increasing our oil, increasing our tent pegs, increasing our flax, our flasks, re increasing the anointing on our lives like you did that menorah way back then. Let us truly be a sign to the world that we are your people and you are our God. And there is an everlasting covenant that will never be broken, written in the blood of Jesus. So we give you the glory and we take this bread as symbolism of Jesus' body that was sacrificed for us, Father God. In Jesus' name. And then we thank you, Lord, for, for, this, um, for this juice. It's significant. But the blood of Jesus, Lord, your word says that there is life in the blood. There is healing in the blood. There is redemption in the blood. Hallelujah. There is increase in the blood. There's all your benefits, all your goodness, Father God, that comes from the blood of Jesus and knowing you. And I thank you, Father God, that even for our homework for next week, the doctrine of your son, your doctrine, Lord, thank you, Holy Spirit, for, for bringing us even deeper in, into knowing the mind of the Lord God and what he sees and, and what, what are in his eyes, what he sees, and let us hear his heartbeat. And um, we thank you that we'll, we'll speak what he speaks. But I thank you, Lord, that this is going to be a time of revelation. Revelation to the Lord's glory, hallelujah, in these days. And we thank you, Father, for your benefits. And we thank you for your covenant, Lord. And your word says that none can curse what the Lord has blessed. We give you the glory, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And we drink.